matchup of the day. Let's hear from you guys at home. Earlier, we asked you what European team do you think has shown the best strategy and execution this split and why? And here's what you had to say. The first one is from at Omega3711. He writes, SK Gaming has demonstrated suffocating control in each of their games. They didn't even falter with the sudden loss of an inhibitor. Well, everybody knows I'm an SK fanboy. Uh, it's what Reddit's been saying. I, I agree. I think that particular matchup was fantastic because when SK was doing the trade, they realized that they were going to lose an inhibitor, but they were going to secure a inhibitor as well. And I just think at the moment, SK's team plan decision making is just a step above everybody else's. And it's showing they're still top of the table. The second one is from at Chief Rosie. Fnatic have definitely shown the best strategy and execution for a newly formed team. Their rotations and dives are so coordinated. Well, they did lose today, which is um, a little unfortunate for the tweet, but I think it still goes that Fnatic has shown fantastic rotations. Yeah, exactly. Um, for me, Fnatic kind of reminds me of a Chinese team. Like, you, you think of OMG, the, the do dive comps, and they always go in and they have such a good coordination, even though, as, as it has been said, they've only been playing with one another for like a month. They just show so much trust into one another that this basically carries them into the games. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for sending those in. Remember, you can always add to the discussion uh, on Twitter by hitting us up at LOL Esports and using that hashtag LCS. And now let's look at the game ahead of us, the Copenhagen Wolves versus Gambit. Starting up with the lineup for the Copenhagen Wolves, they are on the blue side in this one. Young Buck is in the top lane, Arax, Jungle, Soren, Mid, Freeze at AD Carry, Unlimited as support, and their coach, Dentist. Well, if we look at the individual performances for this team, what we kind of looked at for uh, the team to step up, Soren, last Last week actually had a pretty good week. On the other hand, Young Buck not feeling that well. Amazing, how do you think that he's been doing in the team? Um, lately has been struggling. Quite frankly, the talent has been improving over the course of the last splits. And uh, he he is not necessarily bad because the social media is kind of hard on him. Let's keep it real. Um, he's not bad at all. He's someone that, that did well in the initial split, but ever since then, the talent around him has just risen. And it's hard to keep up sometimes. And for him, he seems to be strong at this point. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's not a case of Young Buck you know, going down in skill. It's that the skill cap has been raised and he's not remained relevant or equal. For the Copenhagen Wolves, they need to win this game because if they lose, they're putting themselves in that risk of the relegation or to relegation if you're tied for 10. Uh, Trevor, we did see some uh, clips of Soren last week. As mentioned, he did really well in his AD champ in Zed. Is that what they have to put all their money on for you in the splitting? I think yes, but not only that, because Soren proved he can do it. The team needs to work around it. Soren got some kills, he got some split pushing down, and the rest of the Wolves did nothing with it. So the key is not only getting him on that comfort pick and getting ahead, but taking advantage of the, advanta the, taking advantage of the lead <laughs> he's given you. <laughs> Finally, uh, what better way to talk about the Copenhagen Wolves as jungler than with amazing Airwax? How do you think he's been faring there? He's really aggressive early. He really has this solo queue mentality that he wants to get the lead early, he wants to make the plays, he wants to get the team involved and basically like use his confidence that he has himself uh, to help the team out. And if they respond well and he responds well to, to his surroundings, he does a great job. But if that doesn't happen, he can't get rolling, he seems to be struggling. Like similar to, to our young bug, uh, seems to be struggling because the talent has risen. The same kind of plays for airbags. He did really f well in the in the summer split, in my opinion, uh, where he basically replaced me. Um, but now it just seems to be too much of a hit and miss. Mm -hmm. Where if it goes bad, it goes really downhill. If it goes well, however, he seems to be top four jungler in the European scene. Well, we'll see if it's hit or miss in this one. On the red side of the stage, he has Gambit Gaming. Cabo Shard is in that top lane. Diamond Jungle in the mid lane. Nick Pinoy is at 80 carry, supported by Edward and their coach is Leviathan. Um, I always pronounce it wrong. Trevor, help me. Leviathan. Leviathan. Damn it. <laughs> Get it going. <laughs> Um, well, in this one, looking at the new faces, Cabo Shard and Pinoy, well, relatively new, I should say, for uh, Pinoy, they have been doing quite well. And on the other side, the old guard of Gambit hasn't been able to show maybe what they wanted to. Um, to me, it really seems like they seem to just go through the motions. As uh, in scrims, in the SCS, they don't seem to show this kind of hunger that they used to show in IEMs. Uh, and even at, at IEM Cologne, where they showed that they have great poise, they want to win, but it, it seems to me that in SCS they kind of lost this this uh, this joy in playing. I don't know what it is, but maybe the tournament setting for them is just like a way to feel great about the game again. 
which is why they always do well at tournaments. They probably would do well in playoffs if they got there. But due to how they're playing the regular season, just go through motions and just accept where they are and don't really try to, to, to improve on that. Um, I don't see any improvement right now. Yeah, we'll see what they can improve on coming into this game. There's only one way to know how this matchup will play out. So let's head back to the casters and get it on their way. Thank you very much, Shocks. Now, Deficio, there have been some troubles for Gambit, but they've had a very, very rough schedule of late. Of course, they've had to play against not only Unicorns of Love, they've also faced off in the last week against SK Gaming Fnatic. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough schedule, but you have to start somewhere. Against Copenhagen Wolves, this is their chance to get back into this. It's a must win for both games. Yeah. Gambit just, they, they need a first win. They need something to get going. I agree 100%. And if you lose to the Copenhagen Wolves, who already is down in the bottom of the standings, you know you have a long way to go before you can really start climbing off this table here. And as Trevor said, you don't want to hit that number 10 spot because you're, then you're automatically down in the challenger scene. Yeah, you do not want to fall out of that one. Gambit has been a staple of the European LCS for a little while here as picks and bans get underway. Graves is actually removed. And Draven. And Dra yeah, thank you, Freeze. Okay. So a couple of AD carry bans have been unusual yeah. against the grain from what we've seen earlier today. Are we going to see Callista banned against Freeze as well? Because he played Draven and Callista beforehand. And now if you ban out the Draven, you should expect him, I guess, then to lock in a Callista on the side of Copenhagen too. Wolves. Yeah, and Italy being banned. I feel like it's right up Diamond's alley just because he has been innovating quite well. Yeah. He even played it before 5.2 where they changed to how you can now attack the jungle camps and actually get more damage on them with your takedown and and so on. He actually played it beforehand as well. I saw him in solo queue played a lot. Mm, so, uh, man. No yeah, surprise. Here too. You know, here's the thing. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be left up after this. You could ban the Callista, but also Rek'Sai is still up. Yeah, Rek'Sai is open now. Could be the first pick for Copenhagen Wolves. And then I wonder if Gambit wants to respond with Callista themselves. Seeing as they ban away this Draven oh. from Freeze. They take away the Cassiopeia. So what Cass does this prompt? Yeah, the other Cass is immediately picked up. Now, question is, does Diamond go for the Rek'Sai here? I think it makes a lot of sense in this situation. He's definitely thinking about it as Leviathan. You can see him on your screen talking to the rest of the team. Javin is still open if he wants it, the more safe choice. I mean, Rek'Sai is still a fantastic pick. She did get a few more nerfs this patch, but her damage is still insanely strong. Again, her mobility, her vision control, she puts on the map the pressure she can apply. So it's definitely still a top, top pick here for Gambit if they decide to log it in. I feel like you kind of have to. You don't want to give Kassadin and a Rek'Sai to, the, to Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, and not to mention, they may want to mix it up a little bit here because Jarvin's been played three games by Diamond Prox. It hasn't worked out in any of them. His one win, of course, they were on Lee Sin. So... Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense to do it this time. They're going to let it tick down quite a ways and uh, having a little bit of a laugh there with the Shaco. But I mean, yeah, we mix still, it up. Oh, Ari yeah. too. We still also have so many uh, power picks open right now. So it's not like any team is going to lack anything in that department. Instead, you go for the most comfortable picks for you. Ari, we have seen her already today. She got the change in 5.2. Really, really strong pick. I would even say she's stronger than before, even though DFG is gone for her. She's no longer about instantly blowing up a target on her own. It's more about consistently have a lot of damage and just dance around these team fights here, extra mobility from your Q, obviously. And also build a bit more tanky now compared to what we used to see from uh, from Ari. Yeah, now Nick has had some trouble on these assassin type champions. This will be the first time he's played Ari in this split of the LCS. But I feel like this is probably the one that he can definitely do quite a lot of work on considering the state of the champion, as you mentioned, and considering the way they're starting to flesh this team out. Two very strong picks to open for Gambit. Yeah, and I want to see how, if uh, Copenhagen will decide to put Kassadin in the mid lane, how the matchup actually will work out with the changes to Ari. Normally, Kassadin has a ba basically a fine lane, just sitting and farming again, the magic shield, all the sustain through potion and flask against an Ari. I don't think it's going to change too much. Yeah, Arawax is going to lock in the Lee Sin while Jarvan was up. So he's preferring that one right now. They also take the Leon. A lot of Leonas today. Really have been. Yeah. Let's see if it works a little bit better for Copenhagen Wolves than it did in that last game. Again, we see pretty much every support in Europe play these hard engage uh, champions here. And seeing as Annie, they get a small nerf in this current patch, then Leona suddenly rises up as being as being the number one pick, at least if we look at today. And then adding the Lee Sin, I feel like honestly, this is just for Airworks to sit and help out this Cassidy pick. Make sure you get through the laning phase, maybe even get a kill or two and get your Rod of Ages, get your Hourglass, get your big power spike through those two items and then suddenly you can really start actually making plays like we saw Nuke Duck do in the last game. So 
Listen, honestly, just locked into so you can duel this Rek'Sai here and you can make sure Cassidy doesn't get shut down. Yeah, I think it's a nice bridge there. And wow, the last moment, Pinoy is going to take the Lucio's. Wondering what AD carries were going to be picked, considering the number of bands that have been thrown at them relative to this game. Now, Freeze, Callista is still open, and with Leona, there's quite a lot of inbuilt synergy there. Yeah, and actually, Callista here, there's not really any hard engage from Gambit to really lock down the Callista. You need, like, straight hard engage CC, like a Vi, Leona pick, maybe any support. Like, things that can actually flash stun onto the Callista so she won't get to dance around and just kite you around in, in the team fight. So Callista actually wouldn't be a terrible pickup here for the Copenhagen Wolves. They do have a very pick focus combo already. So I wouldn't be surprised if they want some more safe wave clear maybe instead. Ooh. Because they already have the Cassidy being locked in. Yep. Looks like the Callista though. The Callista, that one's locked in. They're still yep. thinking about the last choice. We did see a top lane Kennen being played by SK Gaming. And that was of course last week. Will the Copenhagen Wolves attempt to do it this time around as the timer ticks down on the final rotation of the Copenhagen Wolves pick ban. Looks like it is. It's a blind pick Kennen here, but he's a very safe laner. Obviously just relies a lot on, on, on his ulti. We saw Freddy last week played into a NAR and really used the Kennen in team fight so well. Always managed to get multiple people stunned and obviously get them so low that the rest of his team could just finish everything. When I'm not expecting Kennen in the mid lane. I will say he's going to be top lane. But we're gonna have to see what Gamma locks in uh, as the uh, as the last pick. Still worth noting, it's a it's a technical flex pick here. But Gambit has a last minute choice, and it's not an Urgot. I don't think it will be Urgot, but it will certainly be something. Gambit Gaming, they have a few options here. They could send the Lulu top and take another support. Yeah, really, Gambit's problem is they don't have a way of actually shutting down this Callista pick in these team fights. And once Callista gets going and start dancing around. She can just consistently poke down so many so many players because of the Hurricane and the Rent, obviously. And then you have a Kassadin to finish up everything in the fights. You have obviously Kennen to go in with Leona. So Gambit in this situation is in a bit of a tricky spot because you don't really have any options except for maybe a Lissandra pick, which it could have been. Instead, actually going the other way and taking the Gragas for them. Currently sitting in the jungle, would expect it to be a top lane Gragas. I, I think they will make that switch after the fact, and that will be a really interesting top lane matchup across the board. Two champions we didn't really expect to see quite so much of. That will be all done, unless they don't switch it. I mean, that's still a possibility to send Rek'Sai top. I mean, Diamond did play Gragas jungle a while ago, but it's not something we have seen in a long time. Same for Rek'Sai. We feel like Rek'Sai is utilized yeah, much better in the jungle. We can really use your ulti as well, and you don't have. I mean, you already have a teleport on your top lane. Now you have the extra global on your jungler. Just giving you, giving you even more map pressure. I like this pick for Young Buck, especially because he's always had this trouble of overextending, getting caught out, something that can be easily punished by Gambit Gaming if they recognize it. And on a pick like Kennen that has so much mobility, I feel like that gets him out of trouble. It gives him a safe lane. If they go for standard, I'm liking it. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a safer choice. But it's also a champion if you do fall behind and you don't really get to your hourglass fairly early, you're not really going to do anything. That's and then true. suddenly you're just going to be there trying to stun someone. and back He's going to try to channel his inner Freddy. We'll see if that does work out. We'll have to now, see. You guys have seen the comps. Tweet us at LOL Esports using the hashtag CWIN or GMBWIN and tell us if you think Gambit Gaming will find their first W of this season. Yeah, and now Ken and New pick. Callista, of course, for free. Draven was banned against him. And now we're going to have to see if Gambit can do anything actually to shut him down because he's going to be jumping around these fights quite a lot. Yeah. Quite I easily. Think, I, well. I think he will be jumping around quite a lot easily. So here we go. On the board, game five. And Opening balls, Gambit Gaming, and there is an instantaneous boss. So looking here at Gambit's comp with this Gragas, we haven't seen Gragas top lane in quite a while. Back when we actually saw it being played, especially over in Korea, it was the likes of, you know, you went, still went full AP, Rod of H's first item, and then like a death cap maybe. You could go for Lich Bane if you wanted to split push more than actually straight up team fight. So I want to see how Cabo Shot is going to build in this game, because it's not like Gambit has lined up a lot of poke on their side. So we could see like a half AP, half tanky Gragas, and you have Rex and Gragas as the front line. Or we could see him actually go full AP and focus on kiting with this uh, Lulu pick and obviously the mobility of an Ari and a Lucian. And you have the slow from your Q now, have some decent poke damage, and you just kite backwards in these team fights here. Wait for someone like Freeze to overextend, and then you try and capitalize on that. Yeah, both top laners actually starting very, very defensively with a couple of Doran shields picked up on that side. Doesn't really tell us a whole ton of everything since, of course, the game was paused immediately after starting off. Looks like there's a comms issue on the Gambit Gaming side as they 
hesitate to get this one going. But I still think that this is a good start comp-wise from the Copenhagen Wolves. We'll see if they can make it work. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a tough one to pull off because, again, obviously you have to make sure that Freeze get a going early on because he's going to be the main carry for them in these team fights. And Youngbuck on Kennen, you really can't afford to miss your ulti. Not saying you're not going to hit anyone. Oh, actually, that is what I'm saying. If you blow it before the fight even starts, so you don't really manage to get anyone locked down with it, Kennen suddenly becomes fairly useless in a team fight because he's just sitting there applying a bit of single target damage and nothing else. So it's going to be a lot about how Copenhagen Wolves can use their very important ultis through the Leona and obviously the Kennen to start these fights here, allow Freeze then to sit on Callista and just pick up easy kills for himself because we know, or we expect at least, him to go Hurricane. And we have seen the damage. I mean, we saw Callista in North America, how strong she actually was. We haven't seen her much in Europe, only actually Freeze who's been playing her. Yeah, Freeze is definitely going to go for a few different types of styles. He's an innovator on his team in the way that Diamond is, of course, this time. The Rek'Sai pickup pick up too. It's kind of interesting the way the state is in because there's there's seems to be teams that specifically target these very, very strong, you know, OP picks. Yeah. And then, of course, there's teams that do a little bit more target banning and kind of mix match between that. And in these situations where you have a little bit more of the target banning, it comes up with some really interesting new compositions. And then, of course, you always have one of those stronger picks mixed in. I'm, I'm curious to see how Diamond takes this Rek'Sai because it's been, I would say, a bit mixed. You've seen, you've seen a lot of yeah. kill pressure on some, but you've also seen some not so heavy, more assist fest kind of just making map presence around. It looks like we are back into the game underway. Here we go. Copenhagen Wolves versus Gambit. This is game five. It is, of course, week three of the European LCS. Diamond on that Rek'Sai, heading his way through his own jungle to start this one off. And this basically is a must win for both the teams because you don't want to sit alone down in the bottom of the standings. Copenhagen Wolves obviously already secured one win but then lost to MYM last week, a game they should have won. I mean, if you consider that MYM was playing with Belisar as sub and the uh, Copenhagen Wolves managed to lose anyway. Yeah, back to this one. Nick was hanging out in that top side with the Ari. Freeze made his way up there. It indicates potential lane swap. However, you do have Youngbuck also in this top side to start this one off. Yeah, so Gragas is a very strong top laner in a lane swap. He's very hard to die if he can farm with his uh, Q, obviously, in the lane. And Kabushite is going AP. He started Thorn Shield, but he's gone 29 AP in terms of runes and masteries for himself. The thing is, though, you would actually have a fairly decent 2-2 two two lane with Lucian Lulu. A lot of early pressure you could apply. But for now, it looks like Gambit will actually swap it around. Or will they actually try to predict where Copenhagen Wolves ah. are going? Because Freeze himself, he was looking for that swap here with the Leona Callista lane, and now Gambit actually managed to counter it and get that 2-2 two two lane. Yeah, Kabushard's actually just waiting for the moment to see if they're going to spot this one out. So Freeze making a move himself up to that top side, and now Unlimited is actually backing off. He should be joining the Callista there. And you see the ward Gambit had placed in the lane. It just disappeared in the top lane now. They was just trying to spot if Copenhagen Wolves had Freeze or Unlimited move in to build up that big wave coming. This means there's not going to be any freeze, but as soon as we're going to have a standard lane matchup anyway, it's just going to be about pushing it down. Because nobody started with a camp. Kabushar picking up this one for himself for the early level two, and then he can actually go back to base, get a few more potions, teleport down to the bottom lane, and already be level two. Yep. Normal lanes, except they're just a little bit topsy-turvy here. You can see the start of this one. Kabushar does spend that teleport. Youngbuck will have a slight advantage on that one, but so early it doesn't really matter too much unless teams want to do something crazy like a really early dragon. So far, it doesn't look to be the case. As you see, Pinoy and Edward giving what they can to this bottom lane in the top. Yeah, look oh. at this lane up here again. Straight on to freeze. Lulu is so strong in the first few levels. He has a lot of damage. Leona will not be able to respond, and that's again why Gambit wanted this 2-2 two and two lane so they can really try and deny the Callista pick some farm early on. Sadly, though, Yombok is starting with a Dawn Shield. Normally, you just do see a Dawn's Blade on Kennen to just get a bit more lane harass with his auto attacks here, but actually going for the very defensive route. Yeah, he's trying to stay pretty safe here. He is getting a little bit of poke on, but Kabushard has that level advantage. You mentioned he started the Krug earlier. Diamond is looking to come in here. A little bit of a land shark, Rift Shark, if you will. Making his way, Young Buck. Oh, Still a little coming. bit forward. There we go. Gonna flash. Oh, they mi he missed it. He flashes way too early, and Cabo Shard will pick him up. Young Buck, not a good start to this game. Now, and I feel like we have seen this before from the Copenhagen Wolves. They didn't know where 
Rex side was starting, so didn't know if Dime was on the bottom side of the map here. Instead, though, fairly easy gank being set up. No flashes used by Gambit either. Just jump bug in the middle of the lane. You get the body slam, obviously the knockoff from Diamond, and that's first blood for Gambit here. Yeah, Young Buck, and he's had some trouble in the KDA department. Second lowest in the European League right now, and it's actually behind Nick. And yeah. that might hurt him a little bit more for that uh, not so prestigious title. Now Soren is in a little bit of trouble himself. Diamond really making his mobility no. Nick flat charm going forward, and they found Soren. Diamond picks up that kill. Yeah, Diamond really making some moves early on here. That was a nice little setup. He was waiting for that flash from Soren, and then he just followed, knocked him up, and then he knew there was a kill for Gambit again. Really, really good start by Diamond, showing this Rek'Sai power early on. And so far from Airwax, picking that list internet to try and counter some of that early aggression. I've been in the right place at the right time yet. Diamond keeps making plays like that. I'll have to change the Rek'Sai music to the Jaws theme. Really, really getting aggressive early on in this game now. Cabo Shard has still not so much level advantage just now, but he has pressured Young Buck, who's actually keeping up in the farm. We'll take a look at that score. The vote definitely in Gambit's favor over Copenhagen Wolves to start this one off. Still very early into the game, but Gambit have definitely grabbed an edge to begin it. Yeah, perfect start for Gambit. You get the lane matchup you want. You get two early ganks from Diamond that all pays off you're going to get a very early Rod of Ages on the Gragas here. We talked about how different build routes you can take on an AP Gragas, and we haven't seen him in a while. But Rod of Ages into just standard AP Deathcap, obviously an Outlast later on and so on. Void stuff has been the standard build. Would make sense in this comp when you have him and the Lulu together to kite. Somewhat long-range poke here, and then obviously the Lucian Ari just waiting for these picks on their side. Very mobile comp from Gambit coming in. Every single guy can actually either speed himself up or dash around. Definitely seems to be working for them so far in this laning phase. And Diamond still hanging around in the middle, not going to find anything there as Soren learned the lesson from previously. is going to be hanging in the back to at least hit a much more comfortable level. But Friesen Unlimited in this top lane have been pushed back quite far by Pinoy. And we haven't seen as much Lucian lately, but he is still that lane bully that can push you back with quite a lot of damage, especially with the help of Edward. So we saw the level 1 and 2 go in favor of Gambit because of the Lula pick, but as soon as you get past those levels, it's not exactly too hard for Freeze to actually sit and farm, and that's what he's been doing. And actually, there's a head in CS compared to Pinoy, who must have missed quite a lot of CS in this lane, otherwise he shouldn't be this far behind, because it's not like Freeze and Unlimited is trading back towards Gambit. Always the lane being pushed down towards them. Clearly, Freeze has been doing a better job getting the CS. Yeah, he really has been getting a bit better of that one. You have a point, but all the same, it's definitely a little bit of a comfortable pick for him going on that Callista right now. Kabashard teleports back down to the bottom side. Really no bones about spending that as soon as he can have it available again. Diamond still roving around. This time he clears out the Gromp. Already level 6 here. Yeah, this is danger zone. It's going to be scary. There's no lane wards in the bottom lane, so you can sneak into the bushes. Remember, Kabashard has his ulti, and there's no flash on Youngbug, so just knock him back with the ulti into the knockup of Diamond. And then Youngbug is dead once again. We might have to go for the dive. So lane is pushing in. Yeah, Diamond's debating how long he wants to hang around here. Yeah. But Youngbug definitely not taking the bait. You see, after those two kills, Copenhagen and Wolves just fall back to a very passive strategy in the solo lane. Yeah, well, again, you have no flash on the cannon here. You have no wards on the bottom side except for one in the dry bush. So you just had to stay back from Youngbug. And that's why also Gamma decided to back away. And instead, Actually took Edward and Pinoy from the top lane, swapped them down bottom lane, and instantly just went for Dragon before Copenhagen was put reacting time. So that's what they did use the push in the top lane for, because obviously Freeze wanted to stay and clear out the last few minions. And that's why Gambit had a few seconds in their favor to get this Dragon picked up very early on. And I like that. Diamond straight back yeah, to farm. Yeah, instantly back to farm. He didn't even have Smite available for that. Really nice opportunistic play and just capitalizing on the Wolves, not really being anywhere to try and contest that. Airwax. You know, on this Lee Sin, he really hasn't done much of anything to start this one off. We haven't really seen him try to make plays. Now, Nick does not get the charm connect, but he will find some more damage on his Soren. There he is, the dive in. Nick might have gone a little too far forward. Airwalks, though, also very low. Soren going forward, and it is Airwalks who does finally come up and make the play. And Airwalks here flashed out of their orb when they actually went to return back to Nick. In the end, pick up the kill, but wow, Nick really diving in for that kill. Under the turret as well. Ends up dying for it, and it's really not been a good split for Nick so far. You mentioned earlier how he's the lowest 
player in terms of KDA in the entire league. Yeah, a little bit. Really that, that, that's up. kind of partially why right there we just saw. Um, he goes in, tries to make the big play. The problem is he was under tower. He was out of his spell rotation. It just seemed to be some questionable decision making there. And, you know, we could say the same about Young Buck, but he seems to have learned his lesson a bit more. Yeah, he was staying back at least. Let's see it again. So notice how there's no ward to try and spot Airwax, and yet Nick doesn't respect the fact he might be there and keep diving. Mr. Charm keep going for the next one. He wants to land the last orb. And that's where again Alex just jumps in. Notice how he's flashing out of it on the way back to Nick. So he doesn't take that true damage. And then in the very end, snipes him and kill him. But no wards to try and spot Airwax. Yet went for a very risky dive. Didn't pay off for Nick at all. Yeah, he's going to be set a little bit more behind by doing that assist up for Soren. Airwax gets the kill. And he's going to be able to clear that one pink ward out. Airwax now a little bit more. Coming around, going to grab himself a Stella Crab. Everything else continues to just be a little bit of a slap fest. Still very close in the gold, but Gambit is leading by just a bit. That dragon also helping them out. They're getting the early stats from that dragon here, but really, you just don't want Soren to get going on this Kassadin because you want to be able to deal with Freeze and not really have to worry too much about the rest. And a Kassadin who gets a good start oh. suddenly becomes a focus point every single yes. time. And Nick does have to use his Spirit Rush and his Flash to get out of harm's way and talk about some positional errors. He has committed just a couple there. Gets out alive that time, but still real trouble. You think maybe Diamond's going to pay him a visit sometime soon. Well, it's pretty tough for Rex at least to gank a Cassidy in, in this late game, but he's trying to at least in, obviously, in the one-on-one. -on -one. Whoever gets to jump there will be winning that small trade, especially also now with Skirmish is Sable for Diamond. He does it every time. So he wants to have this damage reduction for late game team fights onto someone like the Kalista with 20% damage reduction. And he also wants that extra advantage in case he finds the enemy jungler in a one on one. But for now, oh. Nick misses another charm. Yeah, he does. Diamond but is here's here, Diamond. Yeah, they're going to be able to turn this around a little bit more, but they need to connect more damage. Diamond, a lot onto Soren, forcing him to riff walk away as Airwax was no help at all in that situation. They should be able to start shoving some damage onto this turret. Yeah, a lot of minions here for Gamma. Get a bit of damage on this one, Soren. Not able to jump in and wave plays way too low for that one. Now, finally, Airwax joins in and actually teleport behind from Youngbok. Yeah, he's going to try to make the play here. Teleported behind. Here we go. Nick and Diamond caught in a little bit of trouble. There we go. The Maelstrom slices and dices, and Airwax comes up with another kill. Diamond makes his escape, though. Yeah, nice little setup, but you're going to lose a lot on this top turret here. No teleport to come back. There should be a tower for Gambit if Kabushat stays. For now, he's actually expecting uh, Youngbok to return to the top lane. Just to need the next wave before he realizes, okay, he's actually not. Should be able to take that tower and have teleport. Same timing, actually, because Kabuja teleported to the ward behind way too late, had to cancel it. So actually wasted it for him. So this tower will go down. Or yeah. will it? Kabuja is uh, slowly pecking away there. Young Bucks missed out on a bit of farm. Okay, he's gonna stay alive, but uh, it's so low. So basically, you send up one guy to the top lane and just push it down with Kabuja, and that's gonna be a turret. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard now. Uh, Young Buck has actually not done a terrible job of keeping gold relevant in this one. He is going for the early Zanias, as you mentioned. And, of course, a no-brainer there. Didn't really need it in that last engage, but he missed out on some farm. Didn't quite pick up the kill. However, he's not in the worst situation that we've seen him in so far this split. No, and that's obviously despite him dying to the very first gang of Diamond when he was level 3. Then Young Buck stay back and play fairly passive after. This mid turret is taking a lot of damage though, and also the top turret is very low, so there's two out of turrets here Gambit can pick up very easily and get that global gold lead that they want to get. Because when you play Ari as well, you want to abuse that mid game where you are so strong and where you can create these picks with the charm. And obviously you want to make sure Freeze isn't allowed to sit there and get his Hurricane. Get potentially his BT or his Blade of the Ring King, depending on which one he decides after the Hurricane itself will be the BT from Freeze in this game. Because we know how strong he is in these team fights on the Kalista. And he's got a little bit more attack speed with the daggers as well. So still going to have quite some time before he ramps up incredibly effectively. But the Copenhagen Wolves aren't doing too terrible of a job. They are going to lose another outer turret, though. They actually send two members here, Diamond and Cabo Shard, to finish that one off. Down it goes, splitting the gold between them. And now Copenhagen Wolves are looking to try and line up a dragon here. And there is actually a good window of opportunity to take this. It's 15 seconds until it comes back up, clearing away the Rek'Sai tunnels before they start to shove in on this mid tower. Yeah, that was very important by Copenhagen Wolves. As soon as they saw two guys top, they actually walked down to the dead walls. But Diamond is 
coming into this mid lane. That yeah. tunnel they did manage to clear. Got the resto to try and stop Diamond from actually coming to this dragon. Notice Kappa Shot after taking top turret, walking from the lane, so it's gonna be a five versus five here. Yeah, didn't have his teleport available, he does think the long way, but Gambit now. They've been able to defend successfully, and Copenhagen Wolves a little bit greedy to try to grab that tower. Aren't going to be able to get this dragon for free at all if they can even secure it. Big Orb of Deception on Airwax and Unlimited now. Prey Seeker as well to try and zone them out. Sentinel going to hopefully spot away a little bit. Not much before it goes down. Here comes Soren diving in forward, but he might have overstepped his bounds. Has to flash away Diamond. They're going to center on Unlimited. Here comes the cannon. Do they have the damage? A big barrel knocks them all back. Pinoy takes down Airwax. There will be no smite available for this one. Do the Copenhagen Wolves disengage? Not quite yet, but Diamond is also incredibly low in this one. Very risky dragon for either team to attempt to take. Hesitatingly back away. And Gamma just gonna be happy with that one kill. We saw in this team fight here how the cannon ulti basically can be useless. When you engage onto him and he's not able to go onto your backline here because Copenhagen Wolves weren't feeling confident of taking the fight, Yomag just had to pop it and only deal some damage to Diamond and that was basically it. He has no outlast yet, so he wouldn't really be able to do too much. And Gambit gets a kill for it to the mid lane, but Dragon is still alive at this point. Yeah, Young Buck really needs that little bit of extra gold. He's uh, about, about 100 away from that needlessly large rod, but they've not been able to grab any towers. And on the other side, Gambit, they're going to get that last hour outer turret courtesy of Pinoy and those minions. Yeah, and with Gambit winning the laning phase, and actually every single lane, it means they've gotten all these towers down now and have a big gold lead. If you look at just 15 minutes in on 3,000, he has zero turrets from the Copenhagen Wolves, haven't been able to do anything other than sit back and just farm. Gambit got to push the edge here, and push the advantage. You have the Lucian, you have the Iris, you have a strong mid game already. Gragas, of course, as well. Can't forget about him. Yep. The Wolves. Safe and get the Dragon. Copenhagen Wolves are ready to fight. This. Yeah, Diamond Jumper actually got got Here we go! Tried to steal it away. No, it's not going to be enough, but Unlimited going to start the fight off anyways. Gambit able to disengage from that one with just a little bit of poke from the Copenhagen Wolves. Another dragon goes over, actually surprisingly bloodless. There was no ulti from Young Buck here, so he wasn't able to do anything in the fight. And we just saw Leone go in, and then when you feel like, okay, we can't actually get, we can't get the right engage. So we just pull her back out, obviously, with the ulti from Kalista. But mid tower is in trouble. Young Buck teleporting into Defender. on a minion just behind, and he doesn't even get an auto attack in. Gambit have grabbed that one easily. They're actually trying to bait this one out a little bit with Diamond. It seemed a bit indecisive. Does take a bit of damage for his trouble, but they've still managed to grab quite a lot. Yeah, you see the disengage from Gambit here. You have the Gragas barrel. Of course, you have Lulu to slow down whoever is chasing you. This was basically just Gambit having the better position on the Dragon towards the mid lane. So as soon as the Dragon was down, they could just quickly rotate there, take a tower as well, even get the teleport from Yombok. So you're gonna have that global advantage now for Kapuchat to put some pressure on the top lane then potentially TP down in case we have a fight going on. So, so far, Gambit winning out in this early game. Just haven't been able to do anything to Freeze and Callista. He's been farming really well. Yeah, still got to defend this mid turret. Copenhagen Wolves really need this gold, and they should be able to secure it. There it goes. Poked down at the end. However, still, that is their first. It's going to be a bit of a climb back as there is a 3,000 plus gold advantage sitting in Gambit's favor, not to mention a couple of dragons and several towers that they've been able to get. Yeah, now we have to see if Gambit has improved from the last few weeks because they tend to, tend to be a team who doesn't really invest into vision control, who doesn't win through strategy, just through basically brute force your way into the enemy jungle, find the pick, go to the dragon, take a team fight, win that one. That's how they won IM Cologne, obviously beating CLG in the final. But here in the LCS, they have been punished for the lack of warding on the map. Now they have four ping wards just being picked up. I like to see this from Gambit. It's a good move. Knowing you are stronger at this point, get into the enemy jungler. Enemy jungle, not the jungler. That would be wrong. Get in, into the enemy jungle instead. Place down these wards here. Deny vision from Copenhagen Wolves. And whenever Freeze is sitting in a side lane farming or Soren, go towards them. Kill them. Take the turrets here. Push down every single lane. Set up these uh, slow pushes. And that's how you need to kind of freeze out the Copenhagen Wolves. Well, on the enemy jungler's side, Airwax has really been the standout in picking up the kills. I don't even know if they really needed to secure them that way because those couple of instances he's been involved and picked those up. I feel like the money could have been better spent giving it to Soren or giving it even, you know, over to someone else in that situation. So Copenhagen Wolves are in a bit of a rut here, just not being able 
to really make use of their comp to the best of their abilities. Now, for now, again, the Cobra and Wolves just want to farm. You have your Hurricane completed now on Freeze, meaning his team fighting potential just went up but quite a lot here. Big power spike for him. He needs to beat TS the next item. He needs to sustain he needs the shield so you can play more aggressive here. Jump around and obviously get the red stacks. And now, we go. going towards Pinoy. Yep, he's actually caught in a pretty bad spot himself, and no team will be able to get to him just yet. Actually, heal is popped. He finally goes down. His freeze picks him up. Diamond was there a little bit late. Wild growth to keep him a little bit bigger. Here comes Cabo Shard. Do they have the damage? Airwax a little bit low. Exhaust is down on Sword. Rift walks away. Unlimited burning his flash. Summoners all over the place. Do they have the damage to finish off Unlimited? I think they do. And the Leona death count continues this week. Yeah, not a good week for Leona so far, but Pinoy right here should never be able to die. You are the stronger team at the moment. You've just placed a few wards, you saw the Copenhagen and will clear those wards, and yet Pinoy, he just kept pushing down. All alone ends up, of course, dying. Luckily, though, Gambit can come in with the rest of the team and back him off while Jungbuck, without that teleport we talked about before, was stuck in the lane. Let's take a look at that one again. Fates call all the way, yeah. Pinoy just got totally separated from his team. But they were able to still get back in there and just make a massive play on the Copenhagen Wolves. Again, they are strong, Gambit, so they get the fight here. Nick is still sitting in the mid lane, but Diamond tanking it up. Kabashad with the Rod of Ages on this Gragas here, able to do a lot. And just basically grind out the Wolves, get that last kill, but still, Pinoy should never be caught out right there. You should be the one with the vision control. You should be able to see Copenhagen Wolves move around and not suddenly lose randomly, you just do AD carry down. Very true, but after that, it was a 3v4, and then Gambit still wins that one, so... Imagine if it had been a 4v4. Yeah, it would have been a lot different story, and they weren't even able to teleport to defend their turret from Youngbuck, who was pushing away in the bottom side. So overall, Gambit does come out ahead in terms of the tower they were able to grab after the fact, but yeah, still, uncharacteristic mistake from Pinoy there. Yeah, we did see Gambit, though, save all the pink wards, because they've already picked up two dragons. Next one is spawning in about a minute, and that's why we see them actually after this whole, uh, after the, all the action we saw in the top lane, went back to base, straight to Dragon, placed these two pink wards here, trying to set up a massive area around it where you can see everything. And now again, you can see the Copenhagen Wolves walking towards you. You pick the fight, you get this Dragon, three to zero suddenly, and then it becomes so hard for the Wolves because they're gonna be forced to fight later on for the fourth and the fifth one. Yeah, they need to deny this next one if they possibly can. Dragon about half a minute away. Airwax actually a little bit more preoccupied clearing out vision in that barren side brush. Still Gambit in the better position to try to contest this one, but with Freeze and Unlimited, Airwax was walking up the middle, realized it might just be a trap. Yeah, and you have no water on the Dragon. Gambit needs to go down and defend the pink wards here. Don't place them and walk away, so they're instantly moving now from this mid lane. That's a good move now by Gambit. Playing it correct around it. Oh, Soren is in some trouble. That's Nick what happened. Does manage to get the assassination off there. First kill of the game for him, and this should be a Gambit Dragon number three. When you play the Ari and you have all these pink wards placed, so basically the enemy team is face checking you. You can create these picks here. That was a good move by Gambit. They defended the pink wards, got the kill onto Soren. Will be a dragon as well for them. Three dragons now. What have Gambit. they given up for it too? Just the tower that Young Buck was finally able to fire down. Yeah, he'd already lost the outer and the inner on that top side. So Copenhagen Wolves get a little bit more gold back in their pockets. All the same, Gambit are really starting to roll forward and it seems like the Wolves are caught a little bit earlier in the game than Gambit is. And Unlimited right here actually went from the mid lane to top lane after the tower went down. He was expecting Kapoja to be there to try and defend and then they could kill him 2v1. But it simply meant he was actually missing down his bottom and he's here now. It's called, they've Pinoy caught Pinoy again. again. Okay, he's in a little bit of trouble now. He's going to burn his flash, never mind. They're going to be able to keep pushing on him. Exhaust is down, Wild Growth is out. Oh, the barrel, they knock him backwards, freeze. They get the kickoff with Airwax. They can still turn this fight. Pinoy and Eddie go down. Nick trying to dodge and dive his way out of harm's way. But Freeze and the rest of the team not keen on giving it to him, a double kill for that Kalista. Three kills for the Copenhagen Wolves. Pinoy again being caught out of position. They engage onto him, basically just pick up Unlimited, throw him towards Pinoy, then he can't miss all his CC and Gambit. I mean, they're making some good moves, but then they make it harder and harder for themselves. Notice here again, Pinoy all alone. The rest of his team had already disengaged and far away from him. They do manage to save him in the start, but he's so low that as soon as Thorn actually joins in, he will end up dying and now, Suddenly Gambit are lacking some damage because Nick and Diamond are trying to deal with Gumbug down on this uh, 
bottom lane. He has actually ends up staying alive. Man, the very interesting trading between Freeze and Nick. Yeah, they do manage to take each other out there, but it really was just cleanup duty for the Copenhagen Wolves at that point. They thundered a little bit back in. Now, can they grab something out of this? There's no Dragon available to take. It's still very, very risky to attempt a Baron, especially as low as they were after that and not in the right place. However, they have shored up a bit more gold. Yeah, we have to remember Copenhagen Wolves, if they do want to take a Baron later, the, you do have Kalista and her rent stacking up to insane amount of... Uh, damage from her, as long as she gets to actually apply a few spears onto the Baron beforehand, and then combine that with the Smite from Elise Sin, you will be able to take it out fairly fast. And it's going to be near impossible for Gambit to try and steal it if the Copenhagen Wolves manage to get a goal lead and actually can set up this Baron here. It won't be right now, because Dragon is still the focus point for Gambit and where they're investing all their pink wards. They just need to stop being caught out of position, because that lead they build up beforehand is getting smaller and smaller. Couple more wards being placed in this bottom side for Gambit as they try to maybe figure out what the hell went wrong there. Shake off the rust from that last fight. Copenhagen Wolves a little bit revitalized here. Still down in gold, about 2,000, but they have a couple of opportunities to push in here. Roaming together as four as, again, Young Bucks has really been kind of off on his own just trying to split waves. It's worked out reasonably well in these situations. He's yeah. not going to teleport up, though, if they need him for five. He's been able to get two towers and a lot of side lane. Oh, sorry, one tower in the top lane and a lot of side lane farm. But I'm looking at Cabo Shard here. So he's going for Frozen Art. So he's obviously building tanky after this Rod of Ages. I'm not sure I like it. Because now you basically rely on Pinoy and Nick to deal all the damage in these team fights. Obviously, the Rek'Sai has decent damage, but will fall off the later we get into the game. So now you're all about this double damage threat of Nick and Pinoy. And there's a lot, there's enough dive potential from Copenhagen Wolves to always take out one of the carries in the fight. And suddenly the Gambit lineup won't have enough damage. They will never be able to assassinate Freeze. And AP Gragas, combined with the likes of Anari, would have been able to jump in and kill him Whoa. in every single team fight. But no, actually going for the tanky style. Yeah, for a second we lost something, but the turret got blown up after that. You see Nick now pushing down the bottom side, trying to do a bit of a split of his own while the rest of Gambit. I don't know if the collapse would have been recommended. There were only three members really there. So you'll see them back away now. Looks like the Copenhagen Wolves have uh, successfully fended that one off. Gambit a little unsure what they wanted to do. Yeah, they got a bot lane turret though. So not a bad move by Gambit using Nick as a split pusher who is, despite a fairly bad start to the game, he's actually been pretty strong on this Ari and going towards the death of next item. For him, Abyssal Scepter, as we often see an Ari now again. This is what we talked about in Champs, like how she's no longer purely about just one-shotting a target, like DFG Charm, and just blow up someone who face-checks you. It's more, again, the consistent damage you can do in a fight, and that's where Abyssal Scepter, in that extra tankiness and obviously reducing EMR from the Copenhagen Wolves, really works well on her, dancing around with that extra mobility from the Q as well in 5.2. Building up pretty close to that death cap as well. Needs still about 300 gold to manage it. However, Copenhagen Wolves doing a good job of pushing out the waves, or at least pushing them back when Gambit is making it happen. And, you know, this has kind of settled into a bit of the stalemate. This is sort of what we were seeing in the earlier part of the season and in the preseason, where it was sort of, wait for Dragon, go get Dragon, wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah. And not the first time we've seen Copenhagen Wolves just sit back and farm after, actually, after falling behind the laning phase again and again and again. They have to just sit back and try and take what they can get. And honestly, we have to give them credit. They do a very good job of actually getting these picks. Whenever the enemy team makes a mistake, in this case, it's been Pinoy twice being caught out now. They've gone for him. They've killed him every single time. Got the kills onto Freeze as well. So they've been able to kind of claw their way back into the game. Like we saw against H2K, it was the same deal. And again, they have a very, very strong late game combination of obviously Kalista and Cassidy together. And with Gambit going for this tank, Gragas. They will only have that double damage threat, which is going to make it hard for them to take down either Soren or Freeze in the late game fights. Which will be a big problem for Gambit. Definitely will be. Now, Kabushar teleporting in. They're going to ping this one out and immediately set up. See if they can take the fight. Dragon now live. They checked right into the barrel. Might have been a little overzealous there. Soren going to work on clearing out. Dodges the char dodges all the damage, actually, from Nick. Nicely done, but Soren has to spend a little more mana to rift walk his way out of danger on the Scuttle Crab Shrine. If Copenhagen Wolves can make Gambit fight here, they have 
the speed advantage. Yeah, that was a very important pink ward Soren just killed because that's the ward Gambit would use. Like, oh, that oh, limited, oh, wow, they didn't quite connect where they wanted to, but Diamond, he's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get the wild growth up, and how much damage do they have? Unlimited going extremely low, able to keep himself alive as Kabushard lumbers his way up to the side. No damage connecting. Young Buck comes in. This is such a sloppy fight. Unlimited finally going oh, down the to Pitoy. They flash out. They've traded AD carry for support. That's not over yet, though. Diamond flashing his way back. I'm surprised he held on to it as long as he did. Oh, and is that going to be it? Yep. Goodbye, Grumpy. Goodbye, Grump. So one for one. Again, I mean, these team fights, nobody really wants to commit or they're missing the crucial skill shot. Kabushak came from behind, had to just back away instantly. Diamond is rejoining from base. Oh, Arrowax they lay the down. charm. Goodbye, Airwax. Eddie picks up that kill. Diamond Prox, after backing for just a moment, comes right on back. Di Gambit should be able to take this. Airwax isn't here, but still, <laughs> the thing and Wool, they're going to try to do something. He's going to go right in the middle. Can they find Edward for the damage? The Looks like they managed to secure their fourth dragon as well. Diamond in some trouble. Can he stay alive? Freeze, charmed up, trying to escape. Nick, not quite enough damage to pick him off. As soon as I say it, Freeze goes down. They're able to pick up even more. Sora Nick is so low now. Young Buck should be able to mop him up, but he's just caught by the charm. Nick will finally die. And a barrel to seal the deal. Uh, My barrels. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even sure what's going on anymore here. Fight in the jungle first, then teleport back, obviously Rek'Sai ulti. Dragon went over to Gambit, that's the important part here. And Nick managed to get a double kill as well. So in the very end, Gambit can be fairly happy with that fight. Let's see it again. So they go on to Diamond first of all, throwing Unlimited, missing the first ulti. And they don't really want to go for Diamond because they know he's going to get the shield, the wild growth and everything from Eddie here. Notice Kabush on, on your minimap, he's coming behind. But he's again, he's a tank fragger, he's not gonna kill anyone, so Freeze, still full HP, Youngbuck's ult, he just do anything, exhaust, and he was basically out of range. In the very end, he gets a good flash in, but sloppy fight, I mean, I think the Grump is doing more damage than half the members in this game here, or at least in this team fight. This thing alive, Soren. I'm not really sure whose side he was on. No. I guess it must have been Gambit, because Airwax Airwax finished the him. Yeah, this yeah. is just a little bit awkward now. Diamond. Eats a Solar Flare, and the Fates Call, they're actually gonna get a cash onto him here. They do have quite a lot of chase potential. Can they take down Diamond? They finally can. This is right by the Baron Pit. However, still dangerous to start this one up, even without the charm available. Soren, not the Smite available, excuse me. Soren eats a charm on that one. And Gambit are gonna be able to stall this one out, but it's just gotten so messy from both these teams. You said it before, I'm not even sure what's going on anymore. No, not the first time we saw Gambit being caught out either. But Common Eagles have been very good at using this Leona Callista combination. You get that extra range for Leona by picking her up and throwing it towards whatever target you're trying to catch. And then obviously Seven Blade, ulti, everything. So the Wolves have been able to punish Gambit again. But they have to worry about this fifth dragon coming in about five minutes' time. They have to fight, but they were staying. The reason they started the dragon after actually going one for one in the team fight in the jungle. Because so again, they knew they had to pick up that one dragon. That's why I teleport back as well from Youngbuck. Gambit managed to secure it, which was the big deal in that one fight. Yeah, so 10 to 10 is the skill, is the kill line. It's only about a 2,000. The skill, that's a little bit different. Score, uh, the kill, I can't, I can't even talk what's going on in this game anymore. Four dragons to Gambit ahead of the Copenhagen Wolves. That's really been making all the difference for them. But when they've been caught out and just missing a lot of these skill shots on both sides, it's really a very, very awkward set of team fights that we've seen coming out of them. Now, Gambit have all the inner turrets. Copenhagen Wolves only have the outer ones. But if Copenhagen Wolves can win a team fight, can force Gambit to fight on their own terms. They can start to turn the tables there. But yeah. Gambit, you gotta think, you're 0-4, you really, really want this win. They're not going to make it easy. No, of course not. It's been a, it's been a close game. I mean, you see the goal here, 2k in favor of Gambit. It's all about those dragons. Oh, and Charm not Charmed up here. Freeze does have his ulti, worst case. Oh, yep, cover shot. He's actually going the barrel. Whoa, face call to keep his support alive. Limited has been targeted quite a lot in these fights. That did hurt the engage, though, from Copenhagen Wolves, because normally they use it very offensively to throw Unlimited onto Gambit, and this time they won't be able to do it. It also hurt the disengage, though, from Gambit as the barrel was thrown, so... True, true. It all depends on which one's coming back up first. I think that'll be Gragas. But in these fights, we just see how Breeze is staying alive, almost at full HP, throughout the entire fight, except for the very end, where 
Nick managed to guard him with the last one, but it's so hard for Gambit to lock him down in these team fights. And he's only going to get stronger and stronger on this Kalista. It's only going to become harder and harder to actually kill him. And obviously, full late game, we're going to see him sell that Hurricane, probably get a Phantom Dancer instead for just the maximum damage output he can do. But uh, for now, Soren in this bottom lane. No real threat on the Baron. There's a lot of wards placed by Copenhagen Wars to see it. And honestly, we haven't seen enough coordination to really bait it out from either of the teams just yet. Gambit waiting for that last dragon. They want to pick it up, and the Copenhagen Wolves already starting to set up a few wards around it. They need to be able to clear the pink wards placed by Gambit around it so they won't get flanked, because that's how Freeze might end up dying. If Nick comes in from behind, charms him, kills him instantly, Copenhagen Wolves are going to lose the fight straight away right there. So they have to make sure Gambit can get the flank on them. Certainly going to try now. Copenhagen Wolves have a couple of scaling threats. You mentioned the Callista, Freeze. Soren is also one of those. And Gambit's composition, not necessarily the best for extremely long, drawn out games. It will put a Scuttle Crab away. It's still a minute until the Dragon does come up. And now they're on the chase. Throw the barrel. Airwax is isolated, flashing away. Here comes Unlimited, however, trying to make the fight happen. Nick into the back line, gonna dash back into his team. Unlimited, he's gonna get pulled up. Young Buck in the middle. That is. What he needed, the mails from there. Diamond is gonna get picked off by Freeze. Very low are the Wolves right now, but Gambit have already lost their smite, and they might lose a little bit more in this. They're gonna lose a lot more because Dragon is spawning 20 seconds. They're still gonna try to 4v5 this. Oh. Wait a minute, Unlimited's backing. Diamond has ulti now. He's up in 20 seconds. Teleport come in from Young Bucket. This is not over yet. Diamond is gonna come as soon as he actually respawns. The Wolves staying on. They know he's gonna return. That's why they actually recall because the dragon didn't spawn yet, and it's all about that dragon here. Gambit can't fight like that. You don't, like, engage through a cannon and just through all the CC as well from the from the wolves, because then you just get locked in like you saw Nick do, and he was forced out of it. In the end, Copenhagen won the fight. Kabushat, though, I'll try and get it. Nope, not quite the steal. He does throw a big barrel out as well. So Copenhagen wolves, they deny that fifth dragon. They pick up their first of the game, and they've got the scaling factor on their side. Yeah. It's 30. Almost 36 minutes into this game, Deficio. That what dragon that had a, for the Wolves? Had a lot of value. It means a lot for the Wolves because they are really, really strong in these late game team fights. And we see Gambit not finding an answer unless they can instant, instantly kill Freeze or Soren. And they won't be able to kill Soren with their Hourglass. So if they can get the flank, Gambit can win these late game team fights. And the Copenhagen Wolves simply will outscale them. Gonna try to take whatever they can here. Setting up a little bit of a brush bait as Unlimited does. Put the ward down to stop Gambit, or to at least see what Gambit is up to. They're actually going to march on forward here as Soren is leading the charge. Unlimited trying. He flashes after the Zenith Blade. They're still going to find the damage if they can. Diamond in the back by the Baron. They're dodging out every one of these skill shots the Wolves are throwing their way. Eddie, though, in a bit of trouble. Wild growth down the denial. Do they have enough damage to pick him off? Not quite enough. Eddie got finally it. goes down. Soren will find him around the backside. Pinoy, Diamond, and Cabo Shard are are trying to find an answer back, but they just don't have the DPS. Just no damage from Gambit. They actually got a charm onto Freeze here because they were waiting that small bush in the river, but there's not enough people around to actually go all in on him and kill him again. That's where obviously you wanted your DFG on an Ari. But uh, for now, the Copenhagen Wolves, they've survived the early game, got to late game, winning the last few team fights, denied that fifth dragon from Gambit as well. There's starting might be to be another H2K it. game, yeah. I, I think this is starting to look that way. The Wolves have held on quite well. They've got themselves within a thousand gold of Gambit Gaming. And even though they're down three dragons here, there's still a lot of opportunity, a lot of time. We could be in for quite a long show, Deficio. Could indeed. Not the first time either. No, it wouldn't be. But uh, no last whisper yet for Pinoy. He delayed it quite a lot, even though he's against double hourglass on the side of Copenhagen Wolves. And it's going to be about him actually trying to kill Youngbug once he gets out of that hourglass. But obviously, trying to kill Soren when he jumps in as well. So, really need that last whisper for Pinoy. I'm going for it in this case, getting some magic resistance instead. And actually, we don't have a locket on the side of Gambit, despite being against a double AP comp. Especially against a Kennen, where you want to shut down his uh, ulti damage. Which is basically all he's going to bring in these team fights. The CC and the damage from his ulti. And no luck coming in. Very surprising actually. On the subject of item builds, interesting choice of boot enchantment for Edward. He goes for the captain. So they're trying to 
stay together, group up, win these team fights. But, you know, the problem has not been their mobility or their angles. It's just when they get in there and spend their spells, they find they don't have enough damage. Yeah, and they haven't been able to set up the proper team fight again. They haven't been able to get the flank. We saw Soren earlier in the game go very aggressive to just kill a pink board simply to deny Gamma their vision control and their flank option. That's where Copenhagen also played the team fights actually fairly well, always making sure they knew where Nick was when the fight started so Freeze could stay safe in the back line. Diamond now sitting on a pink ward here. He wants to get behind the walls, but not exactly unlimited. He's not the target he wants. It's getting harder and harder for Gambit to really defend even their own turf here, and they can poke it out. But look, you just see how tanky these members of Copenhagen Wolves are, particularly unlimited. Yeah, and again, even if he does drop low, Freeze is going to pull him in and keep him alive. This Captain's Enchant on Eddie you talked about before is a little bit surprising. It's actually for better a kiting from Gambit. Oh, unlimited. Oh! Pulls him in. They nearly blow him up, but here we go. He's still alive, thanks to the Fate's Call. And again, Copenhagen Wolves, they have so much disengage ability on this team that it's so hard for Gambit, even in the perfect situation, to capture them. For the price of one ultimate, they manage to not only spend two of Gambits, but they don't even give them a kill. Yeah, and the Wolves didn't even lose anything because they actually had set up a big minion push in the bottom lane. I guess they lost the pressure on the Baron, which is annoying enough, but they kept it. Oh, they're going back to it now because Gambit has to go and clear a side wave. Nick is not this Baron here. Remember, remember Kalista with her rent. It stacks up to insane amounts of damage. Combine that with a smite, you can secure that Baron very easily. Nick is running, Pinoy is running. Copenhagen Wolves have enough time to clear this one. Gambit have to Wait do this for the damage. damage. Here comes Diamond. He's going to go in here, try to Both. make it. No! Smited away by Airwax. Edward is in a little bit of trouble. So is Diamond. Kabashard will make his great escape, but Diamond is not so lucky. The chase is still on. Soren trying to dash his way out of the barrel. Still eats it, but not quite enough damage there. The Wolves managed to secure that Baron as well as a kill. 40 minutes into this game, and they've got themselves a gold lead. This right here is why it's so important that you set up these slow pushes in the side lanes late game, because that big wave being built up had Nick going over to wave cleared, and that bought enough time for the Copenhagen Wolves to go in and take the Baron. However, Gambit should never been in that situation. You have Teleport on a Gragas. Once you see that wave being built up, you send him bottom lane already so he can clear it out in time before it becomes a problem, and this happened. But Ga Diamond here goes in, tries to smite steal it, but against Rend, and obviously the smite from Airwax. It's nearly impossible for him to get this Baron. He goes so early into this pit, too, and they just oh, try to dodge. Yeah, they try to double up on the damage, but the Ren procs combined with that smite. You're right, just so much damage. You had to try to make the play, but at this point, the Wolves are just starting to get more and more ahead. And Gambit, they don't have the focus. They don't have the single target burst. They can't really do much now that we've entered the late game. And if the Wolves pick up another Dragon, it's getting really, really worrying for Gambit. Yeah, simply being outscaled. But Diamond did the only thing he could do. You have to go in early against Kalista because you know she's, she's going to do like 2k damage or 1500 damage on their Baron. So you have to go in early to try and steal. But this Dragon here, again, Gambit looking for the fifth one. Yep. Can they get it? It's a bit risky by Copenhagen Wolves to start it. It's going over. Nope. With the Kalista Renprox, they're able to do it unlimited and Soren a little bit low in this one. And they again can disengage this, but here comes Aerox. They go right back in for round number two. Where did Eddie go? Back to Fountain for him. Nick is going to pick up a kill. Or excuse me, he is going to pick up a kill, but is he going to stay alive? Yes, he is a double, in fact. So they do get a two for three, but again, the dragon goes over to the Wolves. Still balls in their court. Yeah, again, deny that fifth dragon from Gambit from the Copenhagen Wolves. Let's see it again. So they actually start off the dragon here. Again, you have the Ren stacks from the Kalista, so they feel like they can secure it. But does allow Gambit to get a bit of poke onto them. And then they engage. Cover shot again, he's full tank Gragas, not the target you want. And before they actually see Eddie being a little bit overextended, then they go for him. But they leave Nick alone, they leave Pinoy alone in the start. Let's just see it again. Onto Eddie and Nick here. Nick managed to dash away, I believe, from Pinoy for now trying to clean up. And actually, in the end, Gambit winning the fight, but lost the dragon again. And obviously Freeze is dancing around like he wants to on this Kalista. Yeah, it's going to be so hard to touch Freeze, and he's been really standing out quite a lot. There's also the ever-present threat of Soren. You know, he's so mobile at this point. The Lich Bane on. Whenever he gets his on, he's on. Even if you jump on him, it's so hard to finish him off. Also, Young Buck's been getting more and more effective the more the game's gone on as well. Able to get right in the middle of those fights. I feel like that was a bit of a questionable re-engage from the Wolves, but even though they traded three for two, 
they got the dragon. It's not the end of the world. And there's really nothing Gambit can take off of that. No, exactly. Gambit has to go back after anyway. And now once again, let's look at the side lanes from the Corbin and the Wolves. If they want to start pushing up, they're going to get them side lanes going. Top one is actually dead even at the moment. And Kabusha this time around, going down to stop the push early. Make sure the wave doesn't get built up so the Wolves can go and take it and push the top lane or bottom lane turret so with it. Now the Wolves towards the mid lane, but there is quite a lot of defense there from Gambit Gaming to push this one off. Looks like we're at a bit of a stalemate for now. However, the Wolves still having a pretty strong team fight. The real threat now seems to be on Nick's Ari. He's able to keep alive and keep kiting around. There's just a lot of sustained damage potential if he does manage to get into the back line. Airwax, not keen on giving that one to him, neither unlimited. Gambit's gonna have to back away. They can't push too far out. Yeah, all Cobrang was did here was just buy time because Soren actually went bot lane, got the wave pushing, and now you can see them rotate from mid to the bottom side. So they know they can just straight up walk, walk in and just kill a tower. They have to respect the damage from Gambit and obviously only Kalista will be able to take it down, so that's why they're waiting again for the side lanes. Look at them on the minimap. Top lane is building up, bottom lane as well. Look at that gold graph, though. For the longest time, Gambit was in the lead, but we saw it dwindle just at the 40-minute mark. And this is a problem for Gambit now because they're not reacting to the side lanes, which means Copenhagen Wolves can now move over there, take the big wave, get quite some damage on this tower. Only Pinoy is here to try and wave clear it. And obviously, with no extra priest was staying behind for no reason at all, so they didn't get any tower damage. Yeah, pretty sure why Freeze was uh, following his team here. A bit of a misstep here, but all the same, the Wolves have time on their side. Gambit's time is starting to run out. And here we go, Eddie. He might be a little bit sooner for that one. That He does get away, forced to use the Wild Growth on himself. The Wolves have a chance to push this one in, not the largest of minion waves. However, it'll do for now if they want to take it, though. Nick, Diamond in the threatening position, chasing them off yet again. However, there's still a lot of minions up in the top side. Yeah, there. Those minions should be able to take the tower at least do a lot of damage. Towards, while Copenhagen will keep Gambit busy, Kamshad is moving up there, opening up a potential dive from the from the Copenhagen walls while he has to teleport down, which obviously takes the three or four seconds. But Sorn is too low. Again, you don't want to risk it. Wild growth from Melulu. Yeah, but now Gambit can use the teleport to actually defend. Obviously, Copenhagen walls have to go back. We're going to have to wait for the next Baron. Next or the dragon, next Dragon. Or the next Dragon. I mean, we could see Gambit try and trade the Baron for the Dragon. And just have Copenhagen Bulls set up the vision again around the Baron. Get it, and then at the same time, Gambit walk straight down, pick up the fifth Dragon. And then you won't be stronger in terms of pushing because of the minions. Oh, sorry, split pushing because of the minions. But you're going to have that 30% tower damage. You're going to be stronger in the team fight because of obviously the extra AP and AD, the true damage you do. And that's how Gambit could then potentially look for a late game team fight win that team fight with the fifth dragon and that's how you secure the game because otherwise the fights will just keep going like we've seen the last 20 minutes. Copenhagen will dictate the map, dictate the fights and it's all about them. Yeah, this has been a pretty interesting day of matches. Kind of surprised that after watching how short the Elements game was, this one is the one that ends up going really, really long. So normally we'd see a lot of that kind of stuff switched around but the Wolves are adopting this slow and steady strategy themselves. After finding themselves very, very far behind in the beginning, they've evened up the gold, dead to rights here. Dragon's up in 30 seconds. If they can grab this third one, they've got an extra mobility on their side. But actually, they're able to push on this bottom right now while the rest of Gambit are over, occupied with the Baron. This is an interesting uh, trade scenario. Yeah. This is not smart by Gambit. You're gonna basically allow Copenhagen Wolves now to get in here in the bot lane. And open up the yeah, even Eddie. Yep, Kabush down. Eddie's already down. Kabushard, can he even get away? No. Three members with the Baron buff. Soren is going to pop his hourglass off. Do they have the damage? Not quite. This inhibitor is open for business. Can the wolves finish it off? It looks like they'll have the damage. Gambit on the ropes here, even though three members have the Baron buff, it'll help them counteract the siege a bit more, but they gave up a lot, you're right. Yeah, and they won't get the dragon either, because Copenhagen was gonna go down go down gonna go down and take it now. I don't think that trade was worth it for Gambit at all. What you had to basically what you've been doing for the last few minutes is just sitting on wave clearing and not allowing the Copenhagen Wolves to take down these towers for free. So you could actually force them again to try and break into your base where you can get a good some good poke. 
maybe punish them if they overextend, and instead, by Gambit taking their Baron, you lose again the potential fifth dragon, and you just lost your inhibitor. Yeah, Gambit's still roving around the map trying to grab a little bit back. They do secure that blue buff for Nick Unlimited, though, leading the charge of the Wolves. And Gambit are scattering from the pack. Lich Bane for Copper Shot now. That's not mm -hmm. gonna do him a whole lot in terms of damage output. I mean, obviously, there's the Kragas combination where you have obviously your W, Drunken Rage, it takes damage, you get your Lich Bane proc, but he's never gonna reach anyone in the back line on this oh. Kragas, so I actually like feel like. Got another pause? Once you commit to the tanky route, stick to it. I mean, get him maybe a Thorn Mail against the Callista. Lich Bane this late, it's not going to do him a whole lot. Yeah, I feel like it's it, it, they've been a little bit backed into a corner here because, you know, the last time we saw Gragas, this was a bit ago, of course, in the top lane, it was a little bit more focused on the soft CC. You know, you saw the Iceborne Gauntlet being picked up. Of course, that was a very early item. This time around, he does need a little bit more damage. The whole team needs a little bit more damage. The problem is they're pretty much maxed out on items. I mean, this is the situation where you start thinking about Oh, do I sell the boots for the Zephyr in yeah. the bot lane? That kind of stuff. Yeah, the problem is when, you, when you're going to get outscaled and you're then, again, building tank on your Gragas, it really limits the time you have to actually win the game. Because once, once the two damage dealers from your team is not enough to take down a key target, let's say Youngba going in on the cannon, or even Leona jumping in before she gets pulled back by Freeze, well, then you can't really teamfight properly because you can't dive the back line even though you have a tanky Gragas because he's not going to do enough on his own, and that's simply where Gambit had to win this game in the mid game, when they're building like they're doing now, so you would have their good start on a, on a, on a tank, right? so he would be unkillable, and then obviously Ari could create the picks, Lucian could be strong in the mid game, but once they basically fell apart and Copenhagen will start to get back in the game, your tank now doesn't really do anything. Yeah, it's, well, it's not even a full tank too, you're kind of soft in, yeah, in that exactly. regard too, but it is a little bit weird, Gambit really looking for that like big monster fight, and they'll see if they can possibly get it coming back into this one. But it's so hard against the Wolves as we jump back into game. Very low kill score on a note as well. The Wolves have managed to thunder back a little bit more the longer this game has gone. However, it's so difficult for either team to really make a game-winning push, minus a massive mistake. Gambit, they made one there with the inhibitor being lost in the bottom side, trading it for the Baron. But they have a small window to work with these super minions and see if they can make use of them. Yeah, I won't really be able to use them too much as they're sitting back and defending anyway. Sorry, I think Nick is sitting ready. So it was unlimited. Unlimited, yeah. Looks like we might actually have a fight on our hands, Deficio, but no. not quite yet. Nick's going to be able to clear out most of those minions with just a couple of spells. And here come the rest of Gambit. Yeah, so uh, Kobolding was going to the top lane because they know you're, the super minions in the bottom lane is going to push in. So you want to make sure Gambit has to walk from the Nexus all the way to the top and to the Oh, oh Nick just Mid jumped out of blade. it. He gets charmed. I have not seen that before. That is cool. Yeah, but Nick got to use his ulti. That's gone for oh, the Oh, Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Where is he? Fate's call. They're going to find Diamond. Do they have the damage unlimited? Walking away from this one as Soren pops his on. Yes, Eddie is down. Freeze will secure that kill as Soren chases down Diamond for another. They've found two. Can they keep pushing the Wolves. Youngbuck is now backing away from this one. If they decide to keep going, it would be a 4v3. Actually, Teleport coming on in. They have to get back. Gambit, there are super minions pushing on their Nexus turrets in just a moment. Yeah, the Copenhagen was looking for more here. Oh, Youngbuck, Chomp. He's caught up. Ooh, very, very low in this one. Pinoy, not quite enough damage to take him down. And Gambit, the woes continue. They just don't have the finishing power on any of these. Youngbuck's going to have to back away again, but Super Minions now are here. Cabo Shard is forced to go back. And Youngbuck actually isn't even leaving this one. They're going to just use the numbers that they have. Nick, oh, he's going to get a charm off. Freeze, incredibly low, walking in to the tower laser. That's going to prompt the Copenhagen Wolves to leave, and Kabushard could not defend Nexus turret number one. But at least they've got a wave pushing in the middle. <laughs> they do indeed. Not going to do a whole lot for them. And Copenhagen Wolves. Oh, the teleport turrets. coming in. Teleport, wow, chasing this one. Uh, Kabushard, not quite enough connection. Whoa, all sorts of weird interactions there. He threw himself into Airwax kick. And now Nick. Gonna try to get in. Nope, not quite enough. Here comes the Rek'Sai ultimate as well. Tunnel, they're not quite close enough. And the Solar Flare will not burn anything but the grass as the Wolves again try to chase in. Soren, 
enough damage on the Cabo Shard as Nick and the rest of the team will disengage. Will disengage. This is the goal here for Copenhagen. I feel like I'm saying that a lot this game. Yeah. Happens a few times at least. A lot of gold for Copenhagen Wolves, but we get to that point where everyone is starting to get maxed out in items. And we just see Unlimited. I mean, this is a full tank, Leona. There's no Mikhails to try and help out the Priest, even though the only way he can actually die is by basically being charmed. He just has the Banshee to protect himself. And we did see, as we talked about earlier, how Hurricane is what you have to carry you through like the mid-game parts. But then you sell it late game and you get the Phantom Dancer, so you have the maximum single target damage output from this Callista now. Uh, obviously also supplying some crit for that vintage. You didn't have to have it before. Now, sitting on a lot of it. What do you think Priest picks up next? I think he ends up going for the Zephyr. It's got so much kiting power. Honestly, most AD carries prefer to keep the boots just for the enchant they have on it. They're giving that extra mobility and actually just want the Zephyr. The Zephyr is a very small DPS increase overall, so no, I don't actually think it's worth it for him, and I think he's going to keep the boots anyway. We'll have to see, I mean... Next standing on the base gate here. Yeah, they're just trying to shore up some defenses. As their inhibitor does come back up, but they're down to one Nexus turret here. This is the natural weak point. Can the Wolves get in unlimited? Gonna eat a charm. Fate's call to keep him alive again, as Freeze is going to That's push him out. That's so they annoying. That one defensively. Yeah, that is got to be frustrating if you're Gambit. There's so many times where you think you can actually pick off Leona and then, nope, pull it into the team from Freeze every single time. That's obviously why Unlimited is playing so aggressive as well. Staying so far forward, knowing he has that uh, safety. Freeze is pulling him back. I do want to see actually Freeze wants a QSS instead of that uh, Banshee's late game, get the Scimitar. But I do understand why he wants the Banshee because Gragas obviously will be able to always knock him with his ulti to the team and that's why he's sitting on the Banshee for now to make sure that ulti from Kabosha won't do anything to him. They're looking for a flank here through the base gate. It's going to be so difficult for them to do it though. Fate's Call still not available so they have a small window to act. However, Unlimited's got that Solar Flare up. Young Buck a little bit low but Soren is covering him. Naked Inhibitor still sitting here and the Wolves just can't find a way in but there are minions on the top side. Pinoy unleashes the culling and now Diamond going to duel it out with Soren, but he's taking far worse than he's giving there. And now the Wolves just have the option to go straight for Dragon, and it looks like they will. They will indeed go straight down for this Dragon here. Gambit is not done yet. Diamond's not Volti. Eddie? Oh, they're going in. Here we go. Young Buck a little bit too early on that Maelstrom. Can he go down? No. There is the Zanya's Hourglass. His Pinoy Beautiful. is isolated, picked off by Freeze. Diamond now. The big shutdown goes over to Nick, but Diamond is going to also find Airwax. So it is a two for one. The Wolves have not quite got this fight just yet. And we continue. And we continue again. Like, ult is missing left and right here. Nice little play by Unlimited and Freeze chasing Pinoy. And again, grabbing Unlimited, throwing at Pinoy here. End up killing him. And Freeze, he's not afraid. He can still stay around. And yeah, but has the smite advantage here. Yeah, but Comedy Wolves are not going to allow us to start that dragon. Because Freeze is still full HP. They're going to try it. Uh, Diamond's going to worm his way in to the pit, see if they can actually do something here. Well, Unlimited has ulti again. Yeah, Unlimited, he's just about ready for it. It looks like as soon as the proc will be available, Fates Call is not quite up. Here there we, we go. go, the Solar Flare, the Dragon, all forgotten as Soren is going to go golden, and there is going to be Copenhagen Wolves peeling them off the Dragon. The dragon. It goes down to Freeze with the Ren proc, no smite required, and he pulls Unlimited, pushes him onto Cabo Shard. Can they take this 2v3, however? So far, they're making it not look too bad. Freeze, shut down. Down. Diamond and Nick, they'll find the double kill. They've got the ace. The death timers are so high. Youngbug and Airwax are about to come back up, however, and nobody on Gambit, they can't really do much with this. No, again, it was all about that dragon. So you saw Freeze stop hitting Gambit and just go straight for that dragon. Pick it up four and four now. We're going to have nine dragons in this game. And honestly, first time we see Gambit get to Freeze, Got the kill. So again, let's see the fight. So Freeze is staying around with Unlimited and Sora because he's still on full HP. It's all about the dragon. Don't give the fifth one over to Gambit. They go in once the solo player was ready. Pick up Eddie here, but this managed to get Nick. And that's when now Freeze is tanking the dragon, tanking Diamond as well. And you just see him putting focus on that one. Back away in the very end, but Kabusha will have his ulti again. Ends up killing Freeze after he gets a kill. And now down to Pippi in the left corner, you see Gambit starting the Baron. Yeah, actually nearly finishing it. It looks like they will 
managed to take that one down. Pinoy actually getting the finishing strike on it. So Gambit again buying themselves some time in this game. It is four to four in Dragon. The gold, well, we could talk about it, but at this point, it just doesn't matter. No, I mean, again, we are so close to full items on all the carry champions in the game. On every champion in Actually, the game. Yeah. <laughs> just mean, about. Unlimited is fully stacked up on this Leona. We're going to see Elixir coming in. I do have a feeling we might have to wait a good five minutes for next dragon. And I then whoever gets, the, whoever gets the fifth one, really get the edge and can try and close out this game. Uh, well, there is a Baron on Gambit's side. They have a chance to push this one in, and they had that inhibitor respawn. A pretty big wave in the top side now. They are grouping up in the middle. Again, Gambit, they want to win this game. They want to get on the board. The Wolves want to get another on the board, and both teams really can't afford to lose this one. So oh, we're going to get a out Slugfest now. Here we go, Diamond. He's going to move forward. They just don't have anything, and it's going to be Unlimited finally going down. They've managed to pop him on this one. They take the turret. They can take the inhibitor. Gambit, they've turned up the they heat. Where did well. this come from? They That's can just inhibitors. keep going now. The death timers is so long, it's going to be a 5v4 for over a minute. You're right, Deficio. They can take this out and get two in one fell swoop, and Copenhagen Wolves can't do anything about this. But what on earth did the Copenhagen Wolves just do? Yama was running from the top lane and they just randomly throw Unlimited into Gambit. Start a fight without being five guys in the late game. Unlimited obviously dies. Gambit still trying to push down. They have no super minions. Haven't gotten there yet, but they do have the buffed up minions from the Baron buff. Yeah, and they also have their Baron buff themselves. So here we go. It's still going to be that 5v4 starting to fire down the Nexus turrets. Mistakes get so punished in this late stage of the game. Cobble Shard going back in. Young Buck, he is going to go big, and they find two more kills. This time, it is the Wolves who turn it around. Diamond trying to distract the team. So Nick stays alive, but can he make it out? Pinoy is still making his now greatest game. Finish it. Nick is going to go down in Look just Pinoy. a moment. Pinoy. Pinoy is trying to make his escape as well. He's the only man left standing. Death timers are just so long. It's been so back and forth. And now the Wolves have a big chance. And they make their way, albeit a little bit slowly, and scattered up to Gambit's base. But Pinoy with the outplay. Can he find Freeze? No, I don't think so. Ren Proc for the ace. But he did buy a lot of time here. So Copenhagen Wolves didn't actually go straight for the Nexus. Not even sure they actually could have finished. There's still a long time on these death timers. Yeah, yeah, if Freeze just ran curious. straight. To the base. There's even minions coming with uh, Airwax here. Soren already got the inhibitor down. Freeze is still very far away. I mean, the Copenhagen Wolves could just have left Cannon to defend and then try and finish. They go for it anyway. Yeah, they're actually. They got it. For a moment, they take they this one up. Yeah, they should be able to grab this. It's still 15 seconds away. So after just about an hour, the Copenhagen Wolves outlive and outlast Gambit Gaming to get game number two on the board. What a game, I mean. That's all you can say, really. What a game. Yeah, so back and Relief forth here. Relief and frustration. And we didn't even get that dragon number nine. No more, nobody no, we didn't, you know, it's, it's a caster curse. Everything we've been saying today is wrong, of course. I mean. <laughs> well done, though. It took the wolves quite some time to get in, back into this one, but they managed it. They did the same thing in their other win against H2K, albeit a little bit quicker. And on the side of Gambit, struggles. All around, 0-5 yeah. is not the way to start. No, and it looks so good for Gambit if you go all the way back to like laning phase. They won every single lane. They got three out of turrets down. They're like three or four K gold ahead. It looked great. And then suddenly, Pinoy gets caught out twice. Diamond gets caught out, and three times, where the Copenhagen Wolves managed to buy time by getting that one pick, punishing Gambit for being out of position. Simply meant that suddenly Freeze was now sitting on three items on Kalista. He could stop really dealing out damage in the team fights. And we said all the way back in Champs like how there's no real answer for Gambit to shutting down Kalista in these uh, late game fights. And after losing that mid game phase by just simply being caught out, it meant the comp from Copenhagen was scaled up. And then we just got this insane last 20, 30 minutes of. Being behind 4 to 0 in Dragons to get every single Dragon from there on and out in like late game team fights. Gambit though, they can't be happy. This was their own fault. They had the lead, they were in a good position. And then mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Copenhagen Wolves got back, that was it. Yeah, it was a lot of mistakes on both sides, but at the end of it there, what it all came down to was that just... That man right there. Yeah, <laughs> not fully executing at the end not of the day. Gambit, we no, 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 we didn't do it. You know, we just talked about it. Yeah. But yeah, it was... 
a, a really Herculean effort from the Wolves to get back in, to go back, but yeah. they had the scaling on their side. They had Freeze on a comfortable champion, on a scaling champion. They had Soren able to come up with the damage. Gambit had so many catches that they just didn't have the damage for. And they have to start tinkering again because they've been, they've been playing on a lot of different strats and nothing has really worked for them so far. So what do they do from here? Because you started winless in two and a half weeks. What do you do to get back in to this, to the mindset of even getting one win on the board? Yeah, I mean, right now it's so tough for them because, again, they did everything right in the early game and then you just get caught out. I'm not sure if it's like a focus, shot calling maybe is wrong. We heard amazing say on the analyst desk how Gambit in scrims don't really seem to scrim to improve, just scrim because you have to. And that's obviously a thing they have to change. We know Leviathan has joined the team as a coach. He was there last week. And I talked to him before the game, he said, we need more time. I mean, there are so many things we need to fix, but we have good players. We trust in the players we have on the lineup. And we know with more practice, a few more weeks, as long as we can maybe secure one or two wins and don't fall too far behind, then we can still come back and go towards the top six spots. But uh, I mean, look at Gamble right now, it's, it's not looking good. There are too many individual mistakes for them. And as a team, they just seem to to basically fail, uh, fail late game when it comes to strategy and how to execute whatever comp they do have. Yeah, so they'll definitely have to be going back to the playbooks for that one. And really, props to the Wolves for coming out on top, but Gambit really held on as long as they possibly could with a composition that just didn't really work out into the later stages of that game. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about Copenhagen Wolves. We have to say, it's not the first time we see them fall far behind early on and then have to claw their way back. H2K, they managed to do it. Back when H2K didn't know how to actually finish the game. Now, Gambit was the same deal. And obviously, the Copenhagen Wolves, in the games where they play, I'm going to say against better teams, they get punished for falling so far behind early on and will never really get back in the game. So that's still a big, big problem for them. They have to consider what's going on. Are they picking weak laners? I don't really think so in this case. You have the Kennen, Kasselin. Kasselin matchup into Ari is fine. Airwax was on Lee Sin, but he made zero plays in the early game. So clearly for Copenhagen Wolves, a lot of things is going wrong early on which they have to fix because you can rely on Soren and Freeze to carry you late game an hour into every single game. Yeah, we'll have to see how they change it up as well. But a win on the board is still a win on the board. Now it's time to head back to the analyst desk to break down the Copenhagen Wolves win and wrap up the day. Thank you very much, Pyro. We're joined here by Unlimited. You say breaking down the game, but where do we start? Because what a game that was. Um, Unlimited, maybe it's easiest to go to the beginning of the game in your picks. You had the Callista Leona lane going on, but you ended up versus Lucian Lulu, which was kind of a pain. Tell us about the, the lane swap in the beginning. Well, the Lulu Lucian is kind of uh, counterpicked our lane, so we want to avoid it. But Gamut played really smart. They had Ari in top lane brush for some reason, so she ruined our plans. <laughs> and she found out Freeze, and then we didn't know what to do because we didn't know what they're planning to do. So I just recall, and the moment I recall, we saw them both. Uh, we saw them top lane, so mm. it was too late. <laughs> Is that where your problems early came from? You think the fact that you were planning on doing that lane swap and not have being up against that lane, and then I all kind of went downhill for the early game from there? Uh, yeah, pretty much. The game plan was to lane swap. And everything was based off that. So when we didn't, no one knew what to do. The vision was horrible, and yeah, Joey paid for it. Uh, yeah, talking about Joey paying for it, like you had two early game deaths, obviously, like on both uh, Soren and on on Youngberg. Uh, like there should have been some kind of preparation. Like, why do you guys seem to struggle throughout the early game phases while picking up to mid game and late game, and actually outplaying teams rot through rotations, through team play? Well. It's just more fun. <laughs> 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 oh god! Comic relief. We need that after uh, that long game. No, but honestly, there must be something because oh. it is a pattern for you guys that you guys know how to play when it comes down to the wire. It just takes a while to get started in every game. Well, I think it goes back to the plan because we had a solid plan, really good. We would mm. definitely win the game if we followed it. <laughs> and then. The fact that we couldn't lane swap ruined everything. So everyone forgot what they're doing and stopped warding. I don't know, stopped caring <laughs> about jungler probably. And right. yeah, one thing led to another. Um, also, Gambit managed to rack up four dragons in that time, which I knew you guys had your eye on. Um, at what point did you realize, well, they're going to try everything to get that fifth dragon? And you, it kind of seemed like you were baiting them and playing around that. Was that then some kind of a plan? I wouldn't say so. We were just desperate when we saw four dragons. We were like, okay, we can't let them have the next dragon. <laughs> we are stronger in teamfights, so we just face check everything. Like, 
if I face check a charm, then Kalista just pulls me out. So we just go in and stop them from taking the dragon, whatever it takes. Yeah, you had a, like a lot of situations where you basically had it coming down to a smite fight. Were, were you just trusting Airwax or was it just like to actually go for broke? Uh, we had Kalista. It's a secret weapon. Yeah. <laughs> she does around 2k damage yeah. to Baron yeah. and I guess I 1k to Dragon. So we practice smiting at the same time <laughs> with uh, using Kalista E and securing everything. See, going exactly as planned and limited. There yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. No, but congratulations for you guys. That is another win on the board for the Copenhagen Wolves. And is it is it happy for you to see Amazing again? Because you guys were old buddies back in the Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, it's pretty fun, but I would rather see him as uh, a player in LCS. So I hope he makes it true. Thank because you. a few days ago or yesterday, yep, yes. he almost didn't make it and he scared us. But I scared God. myself. Like, <laughs> that first game. Let's not tap back don't into that. Don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. Just <laughs> drift away. All right. But congratulations, Unlimited, on Thank that win much. for the Copenhagen Wolves. Turning to the standings halfway through the week, um, there's only two, one team that remains undefeated, excuse me, in the LCS, and that is SK Gaming. They top the tables and 5-0. and oh. Right behind them are Elements and Fnatic at 4-1 and one, with the Unicorns of Love rounding out the top four at 3-2. and two. Meanwhile, Gambit Gaming still winless at 0-5 at the bottom of the table. Amazing. And, well telling off this game it's just not going well in, in any lane yeah it seems to be really that they they don't like even if they win the early game they just don't know how to continue the game how to how to keep the game flow going which is so irritating because they used to be the ones that like came back from 8k down like mm -hmm. remember uh season three words uh, season three words when they had a 6k disadvantage versus uh vulcan it was and they came back from that they just seem don't seem to have the same poise anymore and it's really hurting me as a as a a uh, fan because I used to be someone that admires like Diamond Prox, that admires Edward, that admires Alexei, and the two guys remaining are really s seem to be like hurting. Well, impressive memory as well, anyway. By the way, with today's matches officially history, let's see who went big to start the week. We've crunched the numbers, and with 11 kills, 12 assists, and almost 500 CS against um, Gambit Game, today's fantasy leader is the Copenhagen Wolves' Freeze with a total of 45. Points. Well, you know, if it isn't good for anything, those long games, at least you rack up <laughs> fantasy points. Marcus. Yeah, like, if, if I was a fantasy uh, like player, I would actually just get every coming Wolves member and hope they win. Because that is the secret strategy, and you should use it. Yep, you got it. Straight from, uh, from Amazing <laughs> about the secret tip to win fantasy. Freeze wasn't the only player making an impact, though. We have a tweet from at Molecruz. He wrote on Twitter, and he said, Holy power of evil predicts the Flash Tibbers with a preemptive charm, earns them two inhibitors. What a god. Here is your LCS Big Play of the Day. This is Danger Zone right now for Fnatic as the Unicorns of Love are threatening the second one. Here comes Yellow Star, however, he's gonna get just melted. Yellow Star jumps into the fight and got instantly charmed. He never even got Tibbers down because of how quick Power of Evil responded to that flash. Godly play or a little bit of luck there? Uh Obviously luck, but luck is part of the game, so it's obviously a big play. Remember to send in your big plays by tweeting at LL Esports and be sure to use the hashtag LCS Big Plays and we'll check out some of your favorites tomorrow. Now fear not, there's more LCS coming your way tomorrow as well. Our five matches kick off with Fnatic versus Giants Gaming. And to close out the day, we have a clash between the heavyweights, Elements and SK Gaming. That all starts tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central European time. That is 9 a.m. Pacific. And SK versus Elements, I know you're looking forward to that one. It's going to be crazy. You have, you have all the storylines coming in. You have Reckless versus, versus Forgiven, like the two best AD carries in Europe. You have Wicked against against Freddy. Again, powerhouse of the top lane. Like everything is coming together on that specific game, and we'll really see who's king in Europe. Yeah, it'll be fantastic. That is all for us for today. From myself, Amazing, and the rest of the broadcast team, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. This is going to be an awesome day. This week's matches could make or break the split with his LCS squad. He's gonna find Forgiven, the team isn't there, and he's gonna get popped by Spence Garen. Here we go, turn it around to Lulik. Big Timbers comes out! This could be the fight, turn it around! But he goes down all the same. Vizachachi, late to the party. Steel back, barely gonna go down. Power of Evil falling as well. Rainover goes down. Hooney Hillisink locking up the back line. Towers are falling and all of the craziness. Fnatic is mortal after all. And the Unicorns of Love take a win in week three. Sha la 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 la
wrong season. Up here, that's a blue light. No, it's not. Yes, it's no not way, blue, man. Are you yes, joking? I can't see if something's blue or not, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, <laughs> Good job. Elements, pick up number four. Rocket and Giants on the board. And here we go, Rhino going in. Can they maybe find the fight? Woolite, Frederick jumping in. They found Woolite, can they blow him up? No, he is just too big. Rocket, come up with win number two. Here comes Aerox, they go right back in for round number two. Where did Eddie go? The Copenhagen Wolves outlive and outlast Gambit Gaming. GG.